Hi, Flex Tube. It's Diane. Uh, today is April 24th, 2021. And it's snowing here in Minnesota again. Yay, go Minnesota! Can we just say that we do not need to have a record or a, an award for the latest snow? Let's not do that this year, please. But aside from that, um, this morning I took a, one of my sons to get a COVID test because he thinks he might have COVID. So he's resting. He's 21. He's resting and we'll find that out in a few days. So yeah, life is always interesting. I get a text in the morning going, Mom, I don't feel good. Yeah, and there's a number of other reasons too that we chose to do that. And they did a strep test because we're very susceptible to strep. That was negative. So yeah, and three of my children work at the same place. And so they have to follow all the rules that their company's put in place. I also have my earbuds in. So hopefully the sound is a little better. I have the cord just wonky. There it is. Okay. I won't mess with it again, but stitching. Oh, I was going to show one more thing. Hold please. Okay. I may sound a little congested, but it's allergies. I, every few years, my allergies really knock me down and I have a feeling that this year I've been keeping on my medicine and I took it today. I just have this uneasy feeling it's going to knock me down this year. Hopefully not. But I'll do a little haul and then show my stitching and then show my sewing. So from Three Owl Threads, I get her nest egg program. I get classic color works, uh, 10 of them a month. If you're looking to build your special flossies or overdyed cottons um, that I get anyway, if you're looking to build your special collection of floss. Th this is a good way to do it. And for a long time I wasn't getting past G's but I actually got all like L's and K's and stuff. So these are the ones I got this month. Again they're classic color works. So they'll go into my stash because I'm using more patterns that call for more of the classic color works colors. So that'll be good. So I got that and they come, she always puts them in a little zippy and they come in a weatherproof pouch and always very well done. So Trisha, 3L threads, I'll link her below. Sorry, I meant to take this out. It's going to crinkle for a second. I also do Fiberlicious Fiber of the Month. And I get five of hers a month. In the last few months, she's been kind of theming her floss. Last month it was all greens. This month it's all these beautiful blues. She calls them Blue Me Away, which is one of her fabrics. I love stitching on her fabrics. I've shown her fabrics before. I love stitching. And Blue Me Away, I am actually have Bella Filipina Pearly of the Orient Sea started on that one. So this blue is Singing in the Rain, which is another fabric of hers. I do have, I haven't stitched anything on it yet. This one is teal, T-E-A-L, I need you. She has a blue letter. Okay, and then this one, blue hydrangea. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. Hmm. I might be making a substitute change in my, a couple of my patterns that I've been subbing out Flosses. Shades of Blue is this one. And this guy is Robin Blue. That is very Robin Blue. So these are uh, 10 yards. They're not color fast, but they're just, they're just beautiful. And there's some variegation. They're just beautiful colors. And her customer service is excellent. Again, that, that's Fiberlicious. I'll link her shop also below and Trisha's shop, because they both do fabulous customer service. I also decided to try... I, uh, hold one more second, please. I had it in my sewing cabinet behind me, and you don't need to see that mess. Um, I thought I would try 
like Fat Quarter Shop's Fat Quarter of the Month Club, and this is the Moda one. And this is the one I got last month, Sunday Stroll. Here are the fabrics. This is not me. Um, their customer service is fabulous, how everything is packaged and arrives, and it, it's just top notch. If you've wondered about ordering from Fat Quarter Shop, this is just not me. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these, but then this one came yesterday. This is American Gathering Petite, again Moda, and Patriotic. This is, this is me, or I should say this is more me. I tend to be more jewel tone, but I'm a marine mom, so liberty and glory, yeah. I think I'm going to stop getting this because I'm, I'm happy with the quality, but the, it's not me. I think what I'll do is, is stop these particular, this particular club and then just order their fat quarters when I find, they have so many beautiful collections, when I find something that I want. So stitching. Let's talk stitching. I have a finish. And my whip go numbers for April involved having a silk gauze piece finished. Now this is not the be like a crow that I showed last time. My kids are outside. If you know the mute button on boys, please let me know. I've had 11 boys. I really don't think it exists. This is something we received in a retreat last fall that Li Linda Stoltz, who's the designer for Erica Michaels, did through uh, Stitchville. It was a Zoom retreat and she did a fabulous job. She took all the mystery of silk gauze out. I have stitched, oh, it's not even on here. There's an Ort jar piece that we did in class. And then in here, there's a tab that says scissors on it. I've stitched that. I don't know if I have it in here. Yes, I do. Right here. No, it's upside down, man. It's right here. And I showed that before. So then for whip go, I decided to tackle this piece here. It's a little pin keep cushion. Now we received all of the finishing materials for all of these pieces. I am not going to work on finishing them. Give me just a second. Okay. It's not going to last because they're boys. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to wait to fully finish these until I have all the other pieces done. This piece here is also done on silk gauze. I have not started. Linen, 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 linen. Um, when I and I have the linen for it and the threads I just haven't started stitching on those so when I have everything because we got the the extra fabrics and I think the only thing we didn't get is polyfill which is fine I have plenty of that so then when we get to that point I can assemble everything oops that side has blocks so here it is finished finished it last night trying to get nice and close right here and it's really cute um it calls for a week's dye works one strand i use the basket stitch and the continental tent stitch from the front those two stitches look like half stitches but it really the back is where you can see the difference because of how they are stitched it holds the tension differently and so you can get different um effects and on silk weave or silk gauze excuse me those are the stitches that work the best and you do all the color stitching like the red and the green and the blue and then you do the fill in and the fill in is really nice when you get to that step because you don't have to have your pattern out you just have to okay got to go down diagonally go down diagonally go up diagonally go down that's it that's it and so I'm going to leave this as it is, I'm going to take the needle minder off, obviously. I do stitch this in a hoop because you mount the stitch gauze to a piece of fabric and then I put 
that into a hoop so then you don't warp the silk gauze and distort it. Otherwise, I tend to stitch in the hand, in hand. It's just how I learned. It makes the most sense for my brain. And now they hurt each other. There's a reason God gave me 11 boys. I don't know what that reason is. But I will say this morning, even though it wasn't fun to go take my son in and all that, and to see him have the, the test done, to have your 21-year-old son come to you and say, Mom, I don't feel good. I need your help. To have that kind of relationship with your child is very special and it's worth all the effort and the headaches and the heartaches and, and all the things. So if you're a parent of any age child, please take the time to get to know your child and build that relationship because you will never, ever, 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 ever regret it. I mean, when my daughter had cancer, she was, she had her first chemo three days before her 25th birthday. She's still cancer free. Um, to have your child come to you and know they can trust you and know you'll be there for them and if you were in the same situation they would be there for you there's there's no words there, that's more valuable than anything in the world so just my two cents <laughs> against allergies <laughs> but <clears throat> I've also been stitching on my other whip go piece. I do not have a cover photo for this. This is my Chatelaine. I only have, well actually, this was in the Gift of Stitching magazine. And it was, uh, if you have that magazine, it was September 2009. It was the cover piece. And it's called Rose Garden Mandala. Now, it has been re-released via Chatelaine or through the, however that happens. And it's called Romantic Rose, or Romantic Garden. It might be Romantic Garden. So you can purchase the pattern. And I am using all the called for fibers, calls for DMC mostly, uh, Gloriana. There's one Gloriana, two or three water lilies, and three different petite treasure braids. particularly this blue. It's beautiful. I had the center portion done, or I thought I did. I, I did find when I was working on the next portion that I had, I had to go back and pick up some stitches. I did that. But my goal for whip go is all four gates and I have two of them complete. And I started working on, so I've north and east done. I started working on south and it's the same pattern, just replicated. These stitch up really nicely. The posts and the bushes are all DMC, but the gates are, mo except for the little filigree, the, the gates are the petite treasure braid. And I'm gonna see if I can get it so you can see some of the, you can see the gold a little bit, but that dark, it looks almost black. That actually is a metallic, it's a um, blue metallic, it's beautiful. I also went through and I picked up the half stitches in the center that I had missed before. I decided to do those. So according to the directions, do the full crosses, half crosses, back stitching. Then go back and do the specialty stitches and then go back and add the bling. That's how I plan on doing it. Um, I've never done a Chatelaine before and I think there might be another pattern. I have the entire Gift of Stitching magazine, all their magazines. I thought there was one more uh, chatteling in one of the pattern or one of the magazines, but aside from that, I don't have any of the other the bigger chatelings. I think I'm going to be tackling one. So there will be like a little pond in each of these corners, and then there's a a fence that goes around. And um, this is on 32 count antique white jobelin, if I didn't say that, because I wanted to make sure that the beads fit well. Um, I do like the higher counts, but I was concerned about the bling. Um, I'm using whatever it calls for. So like the, the posts here are two over two. The metallic is just one over two. 
and then these half stitches that are here are one over, well, it depends on the direction. So I'm just following the directions with regard to how many strands. So yeah, the, it's really, it turned out really cute. And I do want, this brings up something really, really important. I'm gonna reach off camera here. <clears throat> when the kids and I had to go to the dentist last month, um, some of my kids had to have the seals put on, so several trips were involved. I brought stitching. Okay, yeah, bring stitching. And then I put on my mask. Okay, pretend I, ha I have my earbuds in as I put it on. I tried to stitch. What I discovered, and this is what I encourage people to do, is I, I must look out at the bottom of my glasses or how I hold the angle of my piece because I couldn't stitch on the first piece. It was on silk gauze. I couldn't stitch on it with my mask on. Um, but I did bring this piece the second time and I had no issues. Why do I bring that up? I am going to stitch con in June, Lord willing. And um, so my tip, if you're going to go to StitchCon or any retreat where you, we need to have a mask on to be in the convention center. First of all, I am going to be sewing more masks for myself uh, so I can switch them out during the day. And I'll be in Cincinnati in four days. So I'm thinking I have to have at least 10 masks just because, just even if I don't use them all. And you have to have a mask on the plane and all that. So um, besides having multiple masks, I encourage you to try to stitch with your mask on before going to whatever retreat gathering you're going to go to. Because when you have the mask on, you may not realize that some of your peripheral vision has changed. Um, if you always look down, if you have any kind of glasses like I do, or maybe readers or mag eyes or something, having the mask on may change how you can see your work. You may have to have a brighter light or more magnification, or like me, I was thinking of bringing some silk gauze to Cincinnati, but I'm not going to now. I don't think I could see it, and I think it would just drive me nuts. Um, what I did end up doing in the dentist's office that day is I would take my glasses and I would uh, take them off and just put them on top of my head, stitch. But of course, then when they wanted to talk to me, I had to put my glasses back on because I'm farsighted or nearsighted, um, meaning I could see near but not far. So I encourage everybody, I don't, if you have glasses, contacts or not, Take some time before you go where you're going to go to stitch and just practice with a mask. Um, it, it might be very subtle things that you wouldn't notice otherwise, but get a little more comfortable. Also, I purchased from Four Oceans for every, I can't remember, I think it's every $20, there, a pound of garbage gets out of the ocean. One of the things that they do is they take the plastic and they make these little frames. And what that does is it just pushes the mask just a wee bit away from your face. And I did order a couple of these um, terry cloth masks with their logo on it. But these masks also fit on any adult fabric face mask. So they're interchangeable. So I originally bought them for my husband who's autoimmune compromised. I thought it would help him and he doesn't like the mask or the, well, neither one of us like the masks, but he doesn't like this. I like it. If I have to wear these, I'm going to use these. And this is a homemade mask. So they go on to a homemade mask too. Um, I'm going to link the company below. Again, I don't get anything for recommending this company. Um, I just, I, I, I've been using these for probably two, three months and they make wearing a mask easier overall. Um, again, they're interchangeable. I can use the one with their special logo and I can use the adult size that I make. So, uh, this is the Olsen hospital fabric 
mask for anyone who, who sews. Um, it just pushes the mask just a wee bit away and I, I feel, even though I love whipping that mask off and not having to use it, um, I feel it, it just is a better process. So I will link the company, the Four Ocean Company below, and then you can look at purchasing other products if you want, that's up to you. So um, there are other companies that do some kind of push away frame thing with regard to fabric masks you might want to consider. Also, I don't know, because I know Stephanie from Just Keep Stitching said that in the conference center you have to have a mask on. I know at the hotel I'm staying at, in the public places, you have to have a mask on. And, um, but if I'm outside on the sidewalk, I'm not having a mask on. I'm, I'm just saying. Anyway, it might help you to try out stitching with a mask 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because you might say, oh, I need to bring a stronger magnifier. I need to not bring this project but maybe bring a different project. I noticed for myself, having a lighter background project worked better. It, it'll influence what projects you bring to stitch. I know you're gonna talk more than stitch, but hopefully you're gonna get a few stitches in. But you don't have to frog out. It also will help you know, oh, you know, I need to get up every two hours and go outside and get a fresh air or, or whatever. I just encourage you to take the time now because then you're not freaking out because you can't find what you need to find. That would be my recommendation and I ran into it very, rather unexpectedly. I'd never thought of that. I never thought that a mask would change how I have to hold my head and and where I have to hold my pattern and, and my, my project. I mean aside from being in the dentist office instead of home anyway. But yeah, I, I just encourage you to practice with your mask a little. And um, bring several masks to change out during the time that you're wherever you're at. But this piece, I plan on finishing the two gates so that I can mark off my Whitco number because that's my goal. Um, but this piece might go to Cincinnati with me. I don't know. I won't bring bling. I won't put, I don't have any of that yet. I'm not sure if I can order the kit through European Cross Stitch or if I'm just going to get my own. Um, but I have all the fibers for it. And it's fun to stitch on. It's it's a nice pattern to read. It's over like nine pages in the Gift of Stitching magazine, but there there's a nice it from one page to the next is an easy transition. Yeah, words are hard. Words are hard. So that would be my recommendation. Those are my stitching progress. I haven't touched Ann Morrison yet. Um yeah, it's just been kind of a, it's been busy the last couple of weeks, and it's going to be busy this next week, particularly if our son has COVID. But anyway, I also, for haul, for StitchCon, my friends and I are all going to be at StitchCon B, as in boy, and we all purchased this t-shirt. Apparently we're trouble when we're together. Who knew? So I got mine, and I got that through Piper Lou. So um, that's one thing. I also purchased some spirit wear, a t-shirt, and a quarter zip. So that should be coming probably this week. I think I got an email that they shipped, so probably this next week. The only thing I've been working on is my daughter's quilt. And I have the original blocks done. I was going to show them to you. I am not redoing number one. Um, I will at some point in time in the future, and I'll probably do more scrappy, make a bed runner, table runner type of thing. But I wanted to show you the other blocks because those are done. So, this is block number. David Letterman, you know. This is block number two. I believe it's called Peacock's Eye, and this is probably her favorite block, and probably will be. It's between this and one other one I'll show. 
but uh, these are her colors. It's foundation paper piece. This one, now she has, I have to duplicate five of the blocks to make a queen size, and this is one block I will be duplicating. Let's have two. Block three. This one I will also be duplicating. I can't remember what this one is called. Uh, it is called, oh, the Peacock Feathers is that one. This is called Northern Lights. That makes, pretty much, that makes a lot of sense. So that one will be duplicated. This is Spiderweb. This one will not be duplicated. It was not an option. It's not a bad block. It's just, I didn't line everything up perfectly. This is number five, which is Blooming. This one will not be duplicated. I redid that center like three times. So that was not an option. This one was an option, but she didn't choose this one. This is number six. This is Circling Geese. And it looks very different than, than in the book, but it turned out so cool. I just, I love this and the movement. Block number seven is Constellation. This one will be duplicated. Block number eight, Boomerangs. I wonder why. This one was a fun block to do. It really was. And number nine, I don't think I have to tell you what the name is. It's not paint chips, because it kind of looks like paint chips you get from like Sherwin-Williams, but it's actually called film strips. Yes, children, there was film once upon a time. Isn't that weird when you have to explain to your kids what you know, cassette tape is? I remember my dad in his truck, he, he doesn't have automatic locks or power windows. So my son, I, I borrowed my dad's truck to run an errand. And my son's like, Mom, what is that? It was the window crank. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can't be that old. But it was funny. Uh, this is Starburst. This is block number 10. If you're doing this pattern, and some of you have said that you purchased the pattern or will be doing the pattern, this is the block I would start with. Number 10. Do not start with number 1. Number one, it's not a bad block. It just has a lot of pieces. And if it's been a while since you did foundation paper piecing, do this one. Not to mention this one is the one that they illustrate in the book. So I don't know why this one wasn't number one, but it turned out cute. Oh, this one will be duplicated. And number 11, find your way. It's kind of like a mariner's compass. I just love how it, it yeah color change it turned out so good this is the last one I assembled and then this one is number 12 target practice this one looks harder than it is and I wasn't quite sure and then when I fully assembled it and it came together she thought that I would do she would have me duplicate this one but then I finished this guy so this guy is gonna have a duplicate also and these two, this I know this one's her favorite. These two are probably the favorite two blocks in this quilt. Peacock Feathers and Find Your Way. Those are probably my favorite blocks in this entire quilt. If you are going to do this quilt, again, start with block number 10, not block number 1, which uh, is this guy. Um, you want to do the swatch sheet that's at the back. I glued my fabric here. Do this. You will refer to this all the time. Do this. And also, I had half a yard of each of the colors, the blue and purple, teal. And it was enough to do enough fabric for 16 blocks. So if you're worried that that's not going to be enough for 12 blocks, it will be plenty. Also, these diamonds here are actually two different border colors, or excuse me, background colors. And so this will be one, so blue to gray, and this one, purple to really dark, 
gray. So those are going to be in these triangles. There's a triangle and a triangle, and this border up here is made out of triangles. So, and these two colors go very well with these blocks. With these blocks, very well. So when I get that far, we will see that part come together. And again, it's Arcadia Avenue, Sassafras Lane Designs. It is available as far as I know. And you will want these Carol Doak foundation papers. These are thinner than typical copy paper. They use less ink in inkjet and laser. I have a laser printer and I had no problem using this. If you're going to do the 12 blocks, one pack will do you. I had to get a second pack because I, again, had to do more blocks. Um, and it doesn't smear when you iron it. The ink doesn't smear when you iron it. And one, the lady at the quilt shop said, you know, if you use that paper and you're, you're printing for a quilt, um, just make sure you print everything on the same printer and then you won't have an issue, which I hadn't thought about. So I think that's all I have right now. I am going to stitch today. I was going to sew today and I looked at my sewing machine and I'm like, no, it's not in the mood. So I'm going to stitch. I'm going to stitch. I have some secret stitching uh, for a gift that I can't show. I think that's, <laughs> excuse me, that's funny. I think that's what I'm going to stitch on or I will stitch on the gates to get those done because that's very realistic to get those done. They don't take very long. I was surprised. I thought they would take longer, but they don't. And then Jesse Marie will pull numbers later or early this next week for May. I'm hoping she draws one of my new starts. I have three or four of my whip go blocks for new starts and she hasn't called any of them yet, but that's okay. It'll get done at some point. They'll get started. And I think, you know, that would give me an excuse to start old feathers because I could try it with my mask. So then I could bring it to StitchCon. We come up with very interesting scenarios in our minds for that kind of thing, don't we? Um, this next weekend is Spring Fling for Stitchfell. It is full. You can't get into it right now. But it's going to be Zoom. It's going to be Kathy Haberman from hands on design. I was going to go down and pick up my uh, retreat packet, but I called them and said, I think you better send it to me in case it's positive because I don't want to give them any illness. I might also call them again and place an order for stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. We need to support our, our LNSs and ONSs and all these small businesses. They keep the economy going and they work their tails off. So that's my plan. Um, I have piano lessons for the kids. I have to go pick up our monthly food order thingy from that company that shall not be named. I've been doing this for 13 years, but the last few months have been very, well, the last year and a half, two years, have been very difficult. But it is supposed to be 70 degrees on Monday here in Minnesota. Bring it. I am ready. I am ready for some, a longer stretch. We've been getting like one day spring weather and then snow, rain, cold. Turn the heater off. Turn the heater back on. Turn the heater off. Turn it back on. Mr. Miyagi. Um, and hopefully our gas meter will, will stop chirping. It sounds like an animal is dying in the wall, but they replaced it yesterday. I did want to say Minnie Dot hurt his arm last week. Uh, so much so I had him put a sling on because of how he's holding it. And one of his older brothers was the same way about that age. And he had actually broken his elbow. So I've been down this path before, and so I, I just I took a few extra precautions. I posted on Instagram. He's fine. 
he was running. Um, they were outside playing because Mom kicked him out. And it was just beautiful. They were running and Mozzie, he was on a leash and Mozzie tripped him. And so he scraped his arm really bad. But again, it was right around the elbow. And my son, the older son, when he broke his elbow, he just jumped off the couch. You think, oh, he's fine. You yeah, know, no blood. It's not a slash wound. But he actually broke both bones in his arm when he was three. So when Minnie died, he didn't want to bend it. it in all the things, I thought, okay, I've been down this road before. We're going to keep an eye on it. So we wrapped it with gauze and put bacitrace in and, and I took pictures to make sure that it wasn't, you know, getting pussy or any of that weird stuff. And he's fine. I looked at it today and it looks just not even a cat scratch. It's barely gone. It's barely there. And he's been using it. He's four. And so there hasn't been an issue. But I know some people saw it on Instagram and I just wanted to say thank you for your wishes and he's good. We're good to go. So, um, yeah, that's my plan is to go out and my husband is at a shooting event. Um, they have a shooting event through his gun club where they, they do a lot of history and they talk about the Minutemen and the Revolutionary War and, and those type of things in American history and, and they stress, I mean, stress, ca all caps, uh, gun safety and pro proper training to be able to handle a weapon well. And so they've been looking forward to it. The last one was canceled. And so they've been looking forward to this for like six months. So that's where they're at today and tomorrow. So I thought I'd get some stitching done or sewing done, but I'm just not in the mood to sew. So you know what? I'm not going to push it. I am going to stitch and watch some floss tube. Um, I will link some floss tubers that I've been watching that I haven't mentioned in the video. Um, some are new to me, some I've been watching for a long time. I have found some, some newer to me floss tubers that I really like and I've subscribed. And so if you're looking for some more people to, to watch, feel free to look at those links. I'll put three or, I, I usually put about three sometimes five. I don't know why it has to be an odd number, but that's just the way my mind works. I'll put some of those below. I will link other stuff that I've talked about here below. Um, if you look down there and something's not there, just give me another day or two. And if it's still not there, then politely send me an email, which is also below. And I will try and update that information because sometimes it takes a few days for me to upload this and then get to a computer to do what I need to do. So, um, but I want to also say, let's keep our community, a community that builds people up, not tears people down. I haven't seen anything, thankfully, but I've seen it outside of the stitching community. So let's, be a different example and that other people go, what is, what is up with that community that they're all you know, laughing and, and joking and people from all backgrounds and, and all the things. I encourage you to, to build people up, leave thumbs up, uh, leave positive comments on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on all the other social media platforms. You may think, oh, 30 seconds, you know, thank you for a good video. You may think that that doesn't mean a whole lot. It does mean a lot. Or, you know, thumbs upping or liking somebody's post or somebody's video. Again, you may think, oh, that's not a big deal. But it, it can be, it comes at just the right time. It really, really, really does. So let's be a community that builds people up, not tears them down. Let's be different than the world. And even though we all come from different backgrounds and, and all the things, all the categories anybody ever wants to throw out there, it's in the stitching community. The thing we all have in common is you know, projects like this. Not necessarily shadow lanes, but this craft is our love. So let's, let's
let's do that. Let's, let's be different. Let's be different. Cause none of us ever, you know, that essay in school, what do you want to be when you grow up? None of us ever said we wanted to be normal or average. So let's be above average as stitchers in that we build a community that is positive and uplifting. And even if we try Facebook groups that don't work for us, cause I, I remove myself from uh, magical stitches. That group, very, very little drama. I love the moderators and the overall vibe of that group. I, it's just, that doesn't help me in my stitching. So I removed myself from the group, but I would highly recommend that group whenever they open up again. I don't quite know all the details of that, but um, there are groups like that out there that are focused on stitching and, and laughing and, and building friendships and stuff. Let's, let's be that for everybody else. Let's be different than the world. So, uh, okay. I got on my soapbox again. I'm sorry. I, I do that, but, um, I will probably, okay. It's going to be hit or miss the next video because my daughter's graduation is May 15th. So it may not be possible for me to do a video between now and then, but if I can, great. If not, that's okay. I will come back. So love to you all. Enjoy your stitching. Have a good day.